Hi there, this is Math 6, Unit 8, Lesson 10. Finding and interpreting the mean as the balance point. All right, so mean as a balance point. Again, a balance point, we're talking about like if you had a, you know, like a, like a, used to be, and when I was a kid, we used to have things called seesaws or teeter-totters, you know? And you'd have someone on this side over here and someone over here, and you would play on the seesaw and enjoy your time going up and down and that balance point is a place where everything is equal and balanced right so that's what we're looking for and we're talking about the mean as being this balance point right there in between a um, bunch of points of data okay so first of all we have a which one doesn't belong with division here then you want to take a look at these and decide and on your own which one do you think does not belong and what is your reasoning for why you think it doesn't fit there and there's a reason for each one of these for example a reason for this one could be that it is using uh right here the the um the divisor here is the denominator is uh five and the rest are four so that could be why this one doesn't belong there right this one maybe you say it doesn't belong because you only have three numbers on the top and the other ones have four although this one has five as well Okay, that could be why. This one, when you work it out, is the only one that actually equals seven. The rest all have a value of six and six and six when you do the math. And perhaps this one doesn't work because it's the only one where the denominator actually divides into each numerator without any problem, right, evenly, right? The rest all have issues there. So whatever reasons you come up with, those are great. Let's move into today's lesson, okay? <clears throat> 10.2, Travel Times Part 1. So here's the data set from earlier lesson showing how long it takes for Diego to walk to school in minutes over five days. The mean number of minutes was 11. So the mean of, these of this data was 11, meaning that if we add these up, right, if we add these values up, and whatever that total is, we divide it by five, then the mean is gonna be 11, okay? So represent Diego's data on a dot plot and mark the location of the mean with a triangle. Okay, so if we were to do this, something along these lines, we could draw a line like this. We see the data is going to go from 7 to 14. So I can start here at 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, and we have a dot at 7, we have a dot at 9, we have a dot at 12, so 9, 10, 11, 12 and one at 13, and one at 14. So there's the dot plot there, and we're gonna put a triangle to mark the mean at 11. So that happens right here. And you could put the triangle on top, you could put it below, it depends on what you do. Like if I put the number 11 there, probably I'm gonna put the triangle right above it, something along these lines, okay? So there's my triangle to represent where the mean is at. So this mean is telling me uh, that that's the middle, so everything is balanced here. So what exactly is balance? Because if you think about it, when you look at this line, if this is my seesaw, for example, it doesn't look balanced in terms of the number on each side. So we're not talking about the number of data points being balanced, but it must be talking more about the value of those data points to some extent. So let's explain this here. So the mean can also be seen as a measure of center that balances the points in data set. If we find the distance between every point and the mean, add the distances on each side of the mean and compare the two sums, we can see this balancing. So what they're saying is if we add the distances, so how far is it from nine to 11 and seven to 11, this side here, those distances on this side should balance with the distances on this side. And that's what we're gonna do in this little table right here. So for example, we know that our mean, right? Our mean in this case is 11. So how far is 12 this point right here, here's 12. How far is 12 from 11? It's one, and it's on the right-hand side of it, right? How about seven? Well, seven is one, two, three, four away from the mean, and it's on the left-hand side. 13 is one, two away, and it's on the right-hand side. Nine is two away on the left-hand side, and 14 is one, two, three away on the right-hand side. So now we want to find the sum of the distances on the left. With our left values, we had 4 and 2. So 4 plus 2 is 6. Now the sum of the distances on the right side, we had, on the right side, we have 1 plus 2 plus 3. 
which is also 6. So what we notice here is that if you find the distance from of every point in the data set, the distance from the mean to the point, and you add up the sum of those distances on the right and the sum of the distances on the left, they are actually the same, aren't they? Meaning that the distance for each one is exactly the same. Okay, and you can see that with a chart like this. You can also think of it this way. We could also say, well, this is going to be a length of from here to here is 2, and from here to here is 4, right? So there's my, my length, something like that. And on the other side, I have, I have one of 1, I have one of 2, and one of 3. Now, if I was to combine those lines together, what would I discover? I would discover that they are equal. The one on the right would have a length of 6, and the one on the left would also have a length of 6. So they have the same distance between them. The data points have the same distance between the mean and themselves combined, and that makes this the measure of center. That is what a mean is, and it's holding these five points in balance at that point right there. Because if I go back to when I was a kid playing on the seesaw, sometimes it was me on one side, and sometimes I would have my two sisters on the other side. Okay, right? And it would take two of them and one of me, and we could still enjoy the ride, and we could balance it out. And we found that with sometimes, if we wanted to get a balance, one person might have to scoot a little more forward a little bit to get a little closer to the center part in order to make that balance. And we could play on that and balance things out. Don't you wish you had one of those now? Maybe not. <laughs> Can another point that is not the mean produce similar... Oh, sorry. Can another point that is not the mean produce similar sums or distances? Let's investigate whether 10 can produce similar sums as those of 11. So let's pretend that we use the number 10, that it's not the mean. We know the mean was 11. But if you pick another number, will the same thing happen? Well, 12 is 2 from 10, and it is on the right-hand side. All right. So if you think about a number line here, here's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, we have 9, 8, and 7. So 12 is on the right-hand side. 10 is what we're looking at right now. 7 is over here, and it's 1, 2, 3 away on the left-hand side. 13 is 1, 2, 3 away on the right side. 9 is 1 away on the left side. And 14 is 1, 2, 3, 4 away on the right side. That's my right and my left. So let's look at our, my left distances. My left distances are here with 3 and 1. So 3 plus 1 is 4. And the right distances are 2, 3, 4. So 2 plus 3 plus 4. So we're looking at 5 plus 4, which is 9. So what do we notice about these sums here? That they are not equal. And so since they are not equal, the 10 is not a place of balance. It is not a center that we could use as a balancing point to talk about the data in this set. Right? It's a different number. It's not equal. It doesn't work. So the mean definitely worked, like we saw back at the beginning. The mean gave us the balance of both sides, the sum of the distances on the left, and the sum of the distances on the right were the same, showing me that the mean is the nice balancing point of the data set. You can't just pick another number and say, well, that looks close. If you try it, it just won't work, even if it is only one away. So based on your work so far, explain why the mean can be considered a balance point for the data set. Well, here's what I might say. We could say that the sum of the distances to the left of the mean for each data point is equal to the sum of the distances to the right of the mean. For each data point showing balance. Okay, so we're showing balance and that's the big, big thing there, okay? How does this show us balance? And we're gonna continue to explore that today's lesson and some other ones too, okay? 
and we'll get to what this is called. So if you're looking it up at home and doing some Google search, we'll get to that later on. You might start looking at something if your parents are helping at home because there's no school right now. They might look up something called a mean absolute deviation. Right? This is for later though. Okay, we'll talk about this. I think it's tomorrow, or in the next lesson. The next lesson, yeah. All right. So wait for this is gonna be lesson number for lesson 11 so we'll look at that tomorrow because there is a a mathematical procedure for that but we're gonna worry about that later on okay so moms and dads hang in there we'll get there okay let's look at activity number three which is called travel times part two here are dot plots showing how long Diego's trips to school took in minutes which you studied earlier and how long Andre's trips to school took in minutes Okay, so we have Diego here and Andre there. So here's Diego, here's Andre. So I'm going to put a D there just so I can see a little better. I know it's listed here, but sometimes it's so small I just got to look. The dot plots include the means for each of the data set marked by the red triangles. So we have the means here and a mean right there, in case you can't quite see in your video. Which of the two data sets has a larger mean? Okay, well the larger mean is Andre. So Andre's mean which is equal to 14 is a larger mean. In this context, what does a larger mean tell us? Well, since we're talking about the travel time, it means, um, so it means on average, Andre takes longer to get to school than Diego. Right? He takes about 14 minutes to get to school. Diego takes about 11. So what it tells us in this case here is that on average, it takes Andre longer to get to school. <laughs> okay? That's really all it tells us. Now, which of the two data sets has a larger sums of distances to the left and right of the mean? And what do these sums tell us about the variation? Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Variation. Okay. Now, we can take a look here. And one thing we first of all we see is we can see that you know that for Andre's Andre's uh, points, they're one, two away over here, and one, two, three away over there. Diego were three, so that matches over here. But then we're also one, two, and one, two, three, four away. So there seems to be a little bit more spread out here. And when we're talking about variation, what we're looking for is we're talking about how spread the data is, how spread out it is from the point of the center point. So let's t do this here. I'm going to do Diego. I'm going to make a couple charts here to help us figure this out just like we had on the other page. I wish there was a chart here, but there's not. So Diego has data at values at 7. He has a data point at 11, or 9, sorry, 12, 13, and 14, right? And we don't have to worry about left or right, so I, can, I don't have to worry about that part, actually. Forgot my notes here. So we know that our mean for Diego is 11. So how far away from the mean are each of these points? Let's just figure that out real quick. So 7 is 4 away from the mean. 9 is 2 away. Um, let's see. 12 is 1 away. 13 is 2 away. And 14 is 3 away. Okay. So actually, we'll go ahead and do this just because it's good practice for your homework anyways. Now let's go left or right. So we know which are which. So I know that 7 and 9 are on the left side. They're in order here for us, right? That's kind of nice. We kind of put our mean right here at 11. And we know these are on the right-hand side. So our right side values add up to what? 4 and 2, or sorry, left side add up to values of 6. And over here, 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 6. So the sum, 6 plus 6, of our distances is 12, right? The sum of the distances to the left and right. So the sum of distance left and right for Diego is 12. Let's do the same thing for Andre and see what his sums of distances are. Okay, his data points he has a 12, he has another 12, he has a 13, a 16, and a 17. Okay, and we're going to go like this. And his mean was 14, that's our mean there, right? 
So how far is 12 away from 14? It's two, and it's on the left-hand side. So another two for 12, left-hand side. 13 is one away, left-hand side. So my left-hand side values, the sum of those is two plus two plus one is five. The right-hand side value, it's two away there on the right. This is three away on the right. So my right side values are five. So the sum of the distances on the left and the right are gonna be 10. So Andre is at 10, Diego is at 11. So, so Diego, sorry, 12, Diego is 12, Andre is 10 for the sums of the distances to the left and right. So what do those sums tell us about the variation? What do they tell us about the spread of the data? Well, because Diego's is a 12, okay, what this tells us is that Diego has more variation. So Diego has more variation in his data points. That is what that tells us there. The reason it does is because 12 is greater than 10. The larger the number, the more variation there is. The smaller the number, the less variation there is. Okay. So if I had a variation of one or two, it would mean everything is close together. Now, a variation of a large number like 12, it's further apart. Now, overall though, the variation really from each data point is I got five and six, so they're close. 10 and 12 are, are sound bigger, it's the whole total there, but the point is, is that Diego has more variation than Andres, and you can see that a little bit in the data. It's a little bit more spread out up here, isn't it, right? Here we're going from seven, to 14. That's kind of a spread of about seven numbers. Here we're going from 12 to 17, and that's a spread of about five numbers. That's that range, right? We're not talking about the range here at all, but it's a kind of a simple way of looking at how spread out are your numbers there. So number two, it says here's a dot plot showing lengths of Lynn's trips to school. Wow, so there's Lynn. So Lynn's trips to school, look how spread out these are, eight to 22 we can already tell there's a lot more variance with lens, aren't there? These values are way spread out compared to the Diego and Andres. Let's calculate the mean of lens travel time. So the mean is going to be to take all the numbers, 8, 11, 11, 18, and 22, and add those up. And when I add 8, 11, 11, 18, 22, and add them up, I end up with 70. So the mean is going to be 70, divided by one, two, three, four, five values. So the mean for Lynn is at 14. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Because that's the same mean that we had for Andre. Okay, so I could actually add that point right there. There's my mean, my triangle. So interesting, they had the same mean, but boy, do their things look different, don't they? Let's turn the page, keep working with Lynn's data. It says complete the table with the distances between each point of the mean as well as whether it's to the left or the right. Now her mean was 14, so I'm just going to make a note right there. So how far is 22 away from 14? It's 8. Is it to the right or the left of this number? Well, 22 is on this side, so it's to the right. 18 is how far away from 14? It's 4 away, and 18 is over here, so it's to the right. 11 is 14 minus 11 is 3, and it's on the left side. 8 is on the left side as well, and 14 minus 8 is 6. And 11, another 11, is again 3, and to the left-hand side. So we want to find the sum of distances to the left of the mean. Okay, well, the left of the mean once here, we have the sum of these numbers, which is 9, 10, 11, 12 to the left. Right, so our left is 12, and our right is 8 plus 4, is also 12. Okay, now the sum of those differences there, I'm going to add those together, 12 plus 12 equals 24. Now that's pretty big, right? So when we look at Lynn and, and the sum of everyone else, right, we had Diego before, you had Andre, and now we have Lynn. When we talk about the sum of those differences, Lynn is, has a difference of 24. When I look back at where was Diego, 
Diego's total numbers were 12 and Andre was 10. And we thought that Diego was really spread out, or much more than 10. So when we look at Lens and we compare Lynn with Andre, we compare these two together, what can we say about their average travel times? Well, their average, their averages were the same, right? That means their mean, because their mean both equaled what? What were both their means? They both equaled 14. But when it comes to the variability, but Lynn had a much larger variability, right? We look at that number 24 and it means her data was much more spread out, which we could see in the dot plot. We could see that her data points were far more spread out than anyone else's, right? She went from 8 to 22. That's a big spread to be all spread out there compared to what Andre or even Diego had. Look at the spread there. That's a much larger spread, isn't it? Okay? So, in summary, the mean is often used as a measure of center. Measure of center. That's the mean. There's one more measure center we'll talk about later on, and that's going to be, this is for later, so don't worry about that now. But the other measure center we use is the median. That'll come up in about two or three lessons. Okay? And when you call it the measure center because why? It's the balance point for the distribution. It's where everything balances. And at that point, everything is equal and balanced in terms of its distances there. Okay? So, uh, there's some more parts to read in the summary. Let's kind of skim through to the end. So at the very last point here, it kind of goes through what we just talked about. How you find the mean, how you see the balance, talking about the distances, how the distances equal up. So the point here is that even when a distribution is not completely symmetrical, because they don't have to be nice and balanced like this always, the distances of values below the mean on the whole balance the distances of values above the mean. And that's the key thing, and that's why that works the way it does. We're going to pause there, let you work on your homework. We'll come back and check it together in just a few minutes. All right, here we go. Homework for lesson 10. On school days, Kieran walks to school. Here are the lengths of time and minutes for Kieran's walk on five school days. Create a plot, a, a dot plot for the data. So we have 11, 12, 13, 16, and 18. So we're gonna create a dot plot here. And I can start here at 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I now have points at 18. So I'll just fill these in real quick. 14, 15, 16, 17. We have a dot at 11, a dot at 12, a dot at 13, a dot at 16, a dot at 18. So we got them all. Okay. Now without calculating, decide if 15 minutes would be a good estimate for the mean. So would 15 right there be a good estimate for the mean of those values? If you think it's good, explain your reasoning. If not, get a, give a better estimate. Okay. So, this is up to you. You could say yes or no. It is an estimate. There's no right or wrong answer here. You just need to give a good reasoning. Okay? So for me, I might say maybe it's a little bit too high. And the reason I might say it's too high is that I have three values over here and two over there. And while these are bigger numbers, this seems a little bit too far to the right to me. I might want to be something a little bit lower, maybe like a 14 might be a little more reasonable of an estimate. Okay? So that's just my thought there, but you need to <laughs> explain what your reasoning is. Now let's go ahead and calculate it. So to calculate the mean, we're going to take the values 11 plus 12 plus 13 plus 16 plus 18. We're going to add those up and divide by the total number of values, which was 5. So this becomes 70 divided by 5, which equals 14. So the actual mean is at 14. So I can actually put that right here. And there's my actual mean there. So yeah, 15 was a little bit too high, wasn't it? In the table, record the distance of each data point from the mean and its location relative to the mean. Okay, so that means left or right. So our mean value here was 14. So how far away is 16 from 14? It's 2. And 16 is on the right-hand side. 11. 14 minus 11 is 3. That's the distance from 11 to 14, and it's on the left-hand side. 
18 is 18 and 14, the distance there is 4, and it's on the right hand side. 12 is 2 away from 14, the left hand side. And 13 is 1 away, and it's also on the left hand side. Okay. Now, on the next page, it wants you to use this data then to calculate the sum of all distances to the left of the mean, and then the sum of distance to the right of the mean, and explain how this shows the mean is a balance point. So a lot like we did in the class today, right? So for our left side, what do we have? We have 3, 2, and 1. So 3 plus 2 plus 1 for a total of 6. And the right side, we have 2 plus 4, which equals 6. So these two values are the same, and because they're the same, that shows me that they are in that the mean is our balance point, all right? There, it's our balance point there. So that's what you want to then be able to just write about and explain right here in terms of explaining. So write down why that is the balance point, just like we did in our lesson. Number two, Noah scored 20 points in the game. So Noah got 20, May score was 30. The mean score for Noah, May, and Claire, adding Claire in, was 40. Well, what's Claire's score? So think of it this way. Here we have some scores. We have somebody at 20. We have someone at 30. Here's 40. 40 is going to be our, our balancing point, right? So there's 50, 60, 70, you know, I don't know, 80, right? And there's one more data point, Claire, who needs to be on this side, definitely, in order to make that the balance point to balance out those guys right there. We have a 30 and we have a 20. So what point over here has to be the balancing point to make that work? Now there are a couple ways of doing this here. When we talk about our, our sums of distances, we have a distance here of 10, and then we have a distance here of 20, right? So I know my sum of distances is gonna be 10 plus 20, which equals 30. So that tells me that I need to go this way, 30, 10, 20, 30, in order to find that other balance point. Well, where is that at? that is right here at point 70 because that distance is going to be equal to this one which is 30 so that 30 equals that 30 so we could say that Claire's score was actually equal to 30 now is there a math computational way of doing this that your teacher might show you absolutely we're working with the left and the right and you can visually see why this works let me show you real quick I'll do it right up in this space for how this works you could do we know that the how we find the mean, we know that the mean is 30, oh sorry, the mean is 40, you find the mean by taking all the values. We had a 20 plus the 30 plus Claire, whoops, why did I do an X? Plus Claire, which we don't know. When you divide all that, those by three, that equaled the mean, which was 40. So you could set up an equation like this and you can solve this to find out what is C equal to. That would work fine. In this case here, we multiply 3 times 40, so we end up with 20 plus 30 plus C equals 120. We would subtract 50 from this side over here, and you end up with C equals 70. So yeah, you can do it with some algebra to figure that out, but the big thing is, do you understand what you're doing? And that's what the picture here shows. Number three. Number three. <clears throat> Use greater than or less than or equal to. So here we go. We have a negative and a positive, the positive number is bigger. Positive, negative, positive number is bigger. Positive, negative, positive number is bigger. So far we're okay. Now this is absolute value. Absolute value is the distance from zero. The distance from zero in this case is 12. Distance from zero is 15, so this one's bigger. The distance from zero for this is still 15. The distance from this is still 12, so it's this one's still bigger. That's the same number, just flipped around. This is negative 4, and the distance from 0 is 5, so this one is larger there. Number 4, plot on number line 2 thirds and 3 fourths. All right, so here's 0, and here's 1. Okay, if I'm doing 3 fourths, that's like doing a uh, fourth, right? So 1 fourth, a half, and 3 fourths. So there's 1 fourth, there's a half, and there's 3 fourths there. When I talk about thirds, I'm going to take this whole thing and break it up in three parts. And then when I do it in thirds, I end up doing this as a 
one third and about here as a two thirds. Okay, just from what we've done before. Now, if I was to convert these into decimals, just for fun, because some of you love decimals, two divided by three is what? 0.66 and it goes on forever. Three divided by four is what? 0.75. So I can see visually right here where two thirds and three fourths relate to one another. So is two thirds less than three fourths? It sure does seem like it's less than it, right? Or is three fourths less? We would say two thirds is less than three fourths. And how do we know? We can see in the number line the way that that works out there. You could also, if you wanted to, you could make this all with a common denominator of 12. And if you did that, you could see exactly how they are compared, right? That'd be another way of looking at it. So if I did two thirds and I did three fourths, if I multiply this by three over three, I end up with nine twelfths. If I multiply this by four over four, I end up with eight twelfths. And so now I'm comparing with the same denominator, eight twelfths is less than nine twelfths. So that's kind of the math computational way of showing it as well with the same denominator. And number five, select all expressions that represent the total area. All right, so area is going to be, I can look at it a couple ways. Area is the, the length times the width, right? Now it's the combined width. So in this case here, I would add those up. If it was not like a number, if I had four and you know eight, I would add them up and make it 12. Or I could do one section at a time and multiply this by that. So in our case here, right, this becomes like a parenthesis. I could do five times the quantity x plus y. That works out great. This is five plus x times y. That's not going to work. You're not going to multiply those two together. This one here shows what happens when you distribute five times the quantity x plus y. We do five times x plus five times y. So that's why that one works there just fine. I have no idea what that's talking about. And this is five times x times y. Yet that's forgetting that these have to be added together. It's a sum. So that's why that one doesn't work out. Okay. And that's really it for today. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.